Well, this one. Daddy, look. <coughs> Hi, I'm Lou, and this is Lily Rowe. Welcome to the next episode of Little Lessons from Lily Rowe Toddler Wisdom for Forest School. Lily Rowe's two now, so technically a toddler rather than a baby. So we change it to toddler wisdom. Anyway, recently I noticed Lily Rowe recognise the logo of where Daddy works. Now, this surprised me because we'd never drawn attention to the logo or pointed it out or, you know, made it a focus of our attention or anything. So she literally must have just sort of absorbed that recognition of that pattern through seeing it maybe on daddy's jumper and uh, maybe on the building when we take him to work. Now, I first off was a little bit kind of like, ooh, something a bit weird there, you know, like the powers of marketing, infiltrating babies' brains and, you know, recognising things. She does actually recognise other logos, like the YouTube logo on the computer as well. So part of me was like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with this. But then I've been like thinking about it a bit more and kind of trying to work out, well, where does that come from? Because, you know, human beings, we're not kind of evolutionary designed to recognise logos. <laughs> But there must be a reason why we recognise patterns from a such an early age. And so I'm wondering whether it's to do with recognising plants and, and food sources, which I guess evolutionary speaking would be really important from a really early age. And maybe that ability to recognise the colours, the shapes of logos. Sit down. Yeah, sit down. Actually, maybe stems from us recognising the shades of green, the different shapes of the leaves, the different colours of the flowers and the berries, the textures. Um, maybe it's that kind of evolutionary, basically species identification skills coming into play. And the modern world has just kind of exploited that maybe uh, to make uh, us recognise their brand. And this has sort of jogged a memory in me that I seem to remember reading somewhere, I think it might have been an article in the paper, about how there was some sort of study done with primary school aged children, I think like 10 year olds, um, and they were asked to recognise different species and like 8 out of 10 of 10 year olds couldn't recognise an oak leaf for example but they could recognise Pokemon characters from uh, Pokemon card decks and cartoons. And I guess the spin on the article was, oh, isn't this terrible? You know, nobody can identify an oak leaf, but they can recognise these fictional cartoon characters. Um, <laughs> And I guess thinking about it, but it's all the same thing. That ability to recognise pattern is all the same thing, but maybe it's how our culture and our society um, sort of shapes what's important that dictates what children pay attention to and what patterns they therefore then notice and can distinguish between. And I guess, recognising now how early that starts, I suspect it starts from birth, you know, this pattern recognition. It makes me think about how maybe generally in our society we sometimes kind of underestimate what very young children are capable of and maybe we shield them from certain things. Um, uh, you know, in terms of thinking about what's age appropriate knowledge to pass on. Um, but I guess the takeaway here from a forest school perspective is it's never too young to start sort of sharing species identification and that pattern recognition with very young children. And, you know, I don't mean species ID as in let's take out a really complex ID key and a worksheet and tick our way through all the different tree species and plant species. I don't mean that sort of species ID. I mean just talking about 
the shapes of the leaves maybe that you see, maybe using the common names of those plants. So instead of saying a tree, say an oak tree or a sycamore tree or a hazel tree and actually using that vocabulary um, even with babies because you know, who knows what they're picking up and the knowledge that they're actually going in even though they can't yet verbalise that knowledge. So just this week, Lily Rowe and I were looking at the difference between chestnuts and conkers or horse chestnuts um, because she likes putting things in her mouths. I was explaining that the chestnuts, the sweet chestnuts, are edible, that's okay to put in your mouth, but the horse chestnuts or the conkers, poisonous. Probably don't want to be chewing on those. Um, and so we were looking at the shape of them, we were looking at how the sweet chestnuts have the little kind of pointy bit at the top and the little tuft that comes out um, and how the conkers usually are round and got the big pale circle on and you know she was sorting through a basket of them and she was sorting them you know chestnut conker, chestnut conker. So um, yeah, I think talking about the differences of species and also particularly in terms of that hazard recognition, knowing what's poisonous and, and what's not poisonous is obviously a really important skill to learn at an early age. Although, of course, if you are foraging with young children, it's really important to monitor what they put in their mouths because, you know, as they're practicing these pattern recognition skills, they might get confused and they might put the wrong thing in their mouth. So, yeah, do make sure you're supervising if you're foraging. So there's our thought for the day. Perhaps brands and logos are exploiting an evolutionary pattern recognition that is actually all about recognising species. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so you can join us again in the woods next time. And thanks for watching. Pattern recognition is an ancient skill, so we can forage for plants to have our fill. From an early age, let us look at leaves so we'll recognise species when we head to the trees. Ha, 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 ha.